do my intro so I'll just uh, I'll just I'll just pull into these numbers this is gonna get really tiring anyways you guys welcome back to steel fitness raw it is day 28 and I'm finally gonna get out that cauliflower crust pizza to you guys so yeah um, I'm gonna cut it short there before I start sweating bullets and uh, cause this is hard to do <laughs> having issues guys. I had to cut it off here because my my phone battery was really low. It, it hasn't been that long. I don't know why it's why it's so low. So I had to hook it up on the charger because that's my camera. It's my phone. So anyways we won't need all of this for one pizza. So I'll be just throwing a lot of this just in the ziplock here. Future use. I'm gonna have to use this up pretty quick though, because it's been it's been uh, a little while, and I haven't uh, made this video yet. So I need to use it up pretty quick here. All right, so. for this this video it's got this nifty little catcher in it that's one cup so we'll just fill that up twice the the recipe calls for two cups and uh, yeah that's kind of that's kind of neat there was one that had a that had a container on it also that uh but it didn't it didn't uh, have a handle on it so it yielded a little bit more in the same container but uh didn't have a handle on it so that would have been a pain in the butt so we're just gonna come here let me get a piece of parchment paper or something underneath here oh there it is I mean I could just clean up my mess but let's, we'll just do this and kind of try to catch the mess a little bit and then we can uh, we're not wasting any of it Ah, 
screw you in as an object. Stay. All right, so uh, now that I've released my inner demons, Man, guys, I'm really struggling with the setup. I don't know why it keeps cutting out. It's really frustrating me. Dang it. It's already bad enough that this dang mobile connect to the screen. Like, it shows my phone screen, you know, and, and what my phone's seeing, you know, and, uh, but it'll be like all sideways, you know? So like, I mean, I can record uh, vert vertically, but who wants to see a video vertically if you don't have to record it like that, you know? So I gotta kind of like figure out and uh, you know, click down here when the button I'm trying to click, I can see over here. And so I gotta to try to push record or change a setting or something. It, it's freaking nuts. I forgot you're not really supposed to use the base of the cauliflower, just, you're supposed to just use the head. So I usually use the base anyways, just because uh, I don't use up the base in some other recipe or something before it goes bad. I just, I just don't think of any ideas or whatever, whatever idea I have doesn't really appeal to me or whatnot. So I forgot you're not really supposed to use the base. But every time I've done it, it's turned out okay. But uh, it's it's harder to get the moisture out of the base. That's why that's why you don't use it. So I guess we might end up using the whole cauliflower because uh, I'm gonna do it properly to show you guys. So we might actually end up using the whole cauliflower to get uh, two cups. Well, here's one cup. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna smack it right into that pan. All right, what are you, what are you guys doing looking over there? I'm over here again now, jeez. Two. So yeah, this isn't this isn't that bad, but I mean it's a process, which is why if I didn't cheat, I, would, I probably wouldn't make this very frequently. So um, <laughs> so yeah, I'll just uh, I'll just buy the the pre-rice cauliflower. Um, but because you know you freeze it up, it's it's you know it's it's frozen. There's gonna be more moisture in it. So if you want to make certain that you have a firm pizza crust, then you're gonna to want to do a fresh cauliflower. But I got a little trick using this puppy right here to get almost all of the moisture out. And once you've done that, this little hack right here. Well, it's not a hack, it's pretty self-explanatory probably what I do with it, but I'll show you guys. Um, but uh, yeah, that'll that'll get a lot of the moisture out. Well, I'll just I'll just tell you, I don't really need to show you, so I just I'll just throw them in here. I'll just throw them in here and then I'll just take a bowl. Take a bowl and I'll just press on that uh, pre riced cauliflower since it's got all that moisture in there coming out from the freezer. Now, this is after I, I heat it up a little bit on the stove uh, so that it defrosts or whatever. Then I'll throw it in here and I'll squeeze all that out. And then from there, it's, you just uh, follow the rest of uh, this process I'm showing you guys. 
But uh, if you want the firmest, firmest, best held together pizza, then you're gonna wanna just use fresh cauliflower. But uh, I like to cheat, so. There's a lot more risk in uh, going and getting a real pizza if I have to if I have to do too much work, you know. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Alright. Man, this parchment paper didn't do any dang good. God, I'm so messy. This is a disaster. Gomer, I want you to go! Criminy! And he weighs. So I'll turn this on about medium heat. I don't want it to take forever, but I don't want it to burn either. I got stuff all over the floor. This is why I don't cook. Alright. Now that I'm done being dramatic. Blood, sweat, and tears and pain is is uh is the the best recipe for a good uh, meal, don't you know? That's why all the professional chefs do so good, you know? I mean, just look at Gordon Ramsay. I'm very calm compared to him. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move stuff over to one side of the pan. And I'm just gonna gradually Just move the pieces across the pan, trying to get every piece to hit the heat. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll sit here forever trying to get all the moisture out, but. I just go until every piece, well, or almost every piece anyways, it looks golden brown, or, or not, not, not necessarily golden brown, but it browning, you know, it's not like pure white, like, uh, like the fresh cauliflower pre-cooked, you know, I'm just more or less going until uh, I can see that every piece has kind of hit the heat and uh, then enough moisture has uh, escaped from the cauliflower. I don't need that, that stuff to be bunched up there. need it out of the way a bit and it might be a little you know it's a little bit of a process but uh, you know you can either uh, you can get a family member to tag team it with you and you know it's uh makes for a really really healthy pizza so uh, you know it, it's kind of worth it um, yeah you can get somebody to help you or you could cheat like me <laughs> but it's not that bad it's not that lengthy of a process and it's uh, nice and healthy and uh, you know even though it's uh, certainly not the real thing um, it most definitely tastes good 
So if you want it to be like the, like a real pizza, I'm, I'm sorry, but you're S-O-L. But I think it's mighty tasty, so. So yeah, you just keep uh, keep stirring here and uh, you know, you, it doesn't need to be perfect, but you want to try your best to get every every piece to hit the heat, you know. If you, we're not trying to cook the cauliflower, we're just trying to get uh, all the heat, or not all the heat, but a lot of the moisture to escape. All right, you guys, so it's getting to the point where just about every piece has a little bit of browning to it, so uh, I'm pretty confident that we've probably hit about every piece here and that, uh, that uh, the pieces are fairly dry now, so uh, we'll turn it off here and uh, we'll work on uh, getting the crust formed. And then pop her in the oven. Alright, so uh, we'll throw this, these leftovers into some Ziplocs or some storage containers or whatever. You know, that's another thing. You guys can pre-rice this stuff. And then you'll already have rice made up for later. But, uh, you know, like I said, it's going to have a lot more moisture in it that way. Um, I mean, unless you're going to use it pretty quickly, you know, like the next day or something, then it'd probably be all right. But uh, yeah, people can use these bases for, uh, you can just make some rice cauliflower to use as, as a replacement for rice, or you know, you could throw it in some stew soup or what at whatever what have you I'll maybe try to find some ideas and let you guys know what I use it for all right get her get her workspace spiffied up here all right you guys so we here we have ourselves a bowl and we're gonna take an egg Crack an egg in there. Then we're gonna take some Parmesan cheese or any hard cheese, but you want it to be hard. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Don't have enough Parmesan cheese here. I'm supposed to have a cup. Well, I guess we're going to have to throw something else in there. And I've run into this dilemma before. It's it's not going to it's not going to be uh it's not gonna ruin it or nothing, but uh, the harder cheese. So there we have our little cup. The harder the cheese, the better. All right, so there we have our one cup of cheese. So we're gonna beat up this egg first of all. It's nice and beat up. Then we're going to add our cheese to that. Just beat that all up nice. Put 
So all that cheese is covered in ink. Now we'll add in our cauliflower. All right, you guys. Uh, it seems like the problem is uh, with my Wi-Fi for some reason. So I think I got the problem fixed. I don't know where it cut off, but we've beaten the egg. We've added the cheese into the egg and beaten that together until all the cheese is covered in egg. Then we added our dried up cauliflower that we cooked on the skillet there. And now we're going to stir that all up until we think that uh, all the ingredients are uniform, everything's been covered in the egg. And it's not gonna be one piece, It's not. it doesn't work like dough or anything. So don't expect that. That's not gonna happen. All the forming that's gonna happen is gonna happen when you throw it in the oven. It's gonna bake together into one piece. All right, so I think we got it stirred up good. So I'll set that out to the side for now. We're gonna get our bacon sheet here. parchment paper excited guys I haven't had this in quite a while all right so let's get that bunch together kind of to start uh, forming into each other here Press it down evenly. We're going to just kind of form it into about a 10 inch crust. You know, you can, you can, you can kind of, you can try to make a bigger pizza, but, and I've experiment, experimented with that, but, uh, it's just, it, it, it works so much better if you don't go quite that far with it. Um, it stays together a lot better if you don't go over like about a 10 inch pizza. So we're just going to kind of make sure that it's kind of uniform, the same thickness across the whole crust. And you don't want it to be you don't want it to be thick. You definitely don't want it to be thick, but you don't want it to be too thin. And you don't want it to be thin on the edges, because then the edges are gonna burn long before the crust cooks. Okay, so I, I just go, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch thickness, or, but you want it, you want it nice and thin, but you don't, you don't want it to be Super thin. Okay, so balance it somewhere in between about a quarter of an inch thickness and 10 inches around. If you can try to balance it in between there, it doesn't have to be perfect, you'll probably you'll probably get it right. Probably get it right if you aim for those dimensions. 
like I said, don't make the edges thinner than the crust. The whole thing you want to be uniform, the same thickness and everything. You don't want the, it's easy to get the edges thinner than the rest of it. But those edges are gonna burn before the rest of the crust forms, so. I've already pre preheated my oven to 400 degrees. All right, you guys, so I lied to you. The oven wasn't preheated. I'm such a fibber McGee. <laughs> Anyways, now we'll get it in the oven. All right. Okay, and we'll, we'll throw that puppy in there for about 15 to 20 minutes. So I'll set a timer for 15 minutes. And uh, after that, I'll just gradually check on it up until possibly 20 minutes. And just, uh, you know, just cook it until it's uh, nice and crisp. All right. All right, you guys, so it looks pretty decent, but it's still pretty soft. Sorry, that was starting to get a little warm. It's still a little soft, so we're gonna throw it in there for, oh, five more minutes and check up on it again. Well, I'll probably check on it a little more often than five minutes, but we'll set the five minutes just to prevent burning it, just in case. All right, you guys, so it's been 20 minutes. I kind of figured it would probably take the whole 20 minutes. And that is how it looks. And it's still a little bit soft, but it's not going to be not going to be completely hard yet we were just forming the crust now we're going to build our pizza and then we'll throw it back in the oven for about 10 minutes and then that'll be the finished product <clears throat> so we're going to grab some of this Rayo's homemade Got about half the carbs of regular spaghetti sauce so or pizza sauce or marinara or whatever. It's a little bit more on the marinara side than than uh, specifically for pizza, but uh, it's got half the carbs, so that's what I'm using. Oh man, feeling weak now. Jeez, can't open a damn jar. Holy cow! All right, you guys, so you know, just top it with whatever you want, but uh, I recommend that you don't overdo it. The more weight you have on the crust, the less it's gonna hold its structure. So, sorry about that, but uh, like I said before, it's not a real pizza. It's not, can't expect it to be a real pizza, you know. So, I think we can all handle the sacrifice of uh, having limitations on it, don't you think? All right. So, kind of pick up the pace here because I still got to edit this video and I promised six o'clock and it's already probably like 4 30 so better hurry this along I wanted some mushrooms but I forgot to grab them so oh well it's not that big of a deal forgot to throw the cheese on right after the sauce not a big deal, but I'm supposed to do sauce then cheese, but oh well, it's not gonna make or break it. 
And what I like to do, so I like to do some cheese right on top of the sauce, then I'll put my toppings on. And then I'll kind of, I'll put some cheese on top of that and kind of hold down all the toppings. So we'll get our pepperonis here. And we'll throw on some onions. Get down to the, the pieces that I already have cut here. So if you're, if you want a large variety of toppings, I'm doing a decent variety of toppings. Just uh, don't do, put too much of each topping on there. Like I said, you get too much weight on there, that crust is not going to hold up. It's not, it's not the same as a regular pizza. So I'm going to throw some spinach in on mine. Mmm. That's looking pretty tasty. I really want to say screw it and just eat it right now. See, even that might be a little bit, bit much weight on it, but we'll see how it turns out. Now I'm gonna get the cheese. It's kind of falling off. I'm gonna make sure and get that all back onto the pizza because Got that cheese on the edge there. It's gonna kind of almost glue the pizza to the parchment paper when it bakes. It'll bake the pizza to the parchment paper if that cheese is on the edge. So it'll be a little harder to get it off of the pan that way. So we're gonna stick it back in the oven, same temperature, 400 degrees. And we'll stick it in there for 10 minutes. All right, you guys, so the oven just beeped, um, or the timer just beeped, rather. Uh, so we're gonna go uh, check this out. I'm pretty excited. I haven't had this in a while. So let's go check it out. All right. Uh, why, what? Um, the option to turn the camera around facing the other way has gone away. What the heck? Let's check this. Out. I'm excited. Can you tell? Oh, 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 look at that. I don't want to wait until it's cooled down, <laughs> but I guess I should. All right, I took you guys off my tripod here, so let's hope that I can do stuff with one hand. And we'll just cut this into four pieces. We could cut it into less or more pieces and uh, it would probably hold up better but I mean who's gonna cut a pizza this size into like eight pieces I mean come on so we'll just test it out like this so we'll let it cool we'll let it cool down and uh, then we'll test it out here all right you guys so I almost didn't show you guys, but uh, I'll go ahead and uh, try to remove this from the pan. Showing you guys while I do it. So that if I messed it, messed it up at all, then it won't be very easy to get it off. It'll kind of try to fall apart and everything. So let's see how I did. Oh, ho, ho, ho. looky there! Woo -hoo -hoo. So I decided I, I didn't let it cool off yet. I decided I'm gonna try to do it while it's still warm. 
and see how well it holds together because I know when it cools down it's going to hold together better than when it's so warm. So we're going to do it both ways and uh, check and see, see how they hold up so that you know if you're really hungry and you can just start to devour it while it's still hot and burn your mouth and not be able to eat anything else all day. We'll see if it holds together. All right, you guys. So let's give it a shot while it's still pretty warm and see how whole, how wet. <laughs> Choking on my words here today. I can't talk, apparently. Let's see how well it holds together while it's still warm. There we go. Woohoo. Finally spit it out. All right, so here it is, guys. It's holding together pretty well. So just take your time and make sure you do it the right way. And it holds together pretty well. But if you're not patient and follow the recipe, make sure that it's uh, the same thickness all around and everything then uh, you can easily mess it up, but there we go, that's uh, that's pretty good. Usually, uh, you would normally you want to wait till it cools down and it holds together even better, but I kind of wanted to experiment and see while it's still warm how well it's going to hold together, so yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. I didn't mess it up, woohoo! That was one take, guys. I'm not much of a cooker or a baker or anything, so I'm pretty proud of myself. Alright, let's, uh, it's probably cooled off enough. Let's get it with the taste test. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. takes a little bit of uh, a little bit of work to get it done but hey as long as you're not expecting a real pizza and a real pizza taste this is really good and it satisfies satisfies my pizza craving this is really good guys please try it you won't regret it just make sure you be patient because I've tried to do this and not be patient and just kind of throw stuff together and everything like that and it doesn't hold up very well so but definitely try this guys I mean you're you're not going to be disappointed I'm pretty confident saying that some good stuff All right, you guys, so <clears throat> please go check out Chef Buck. Um, I was doing it a different way beforehand where I was uh, squeezing the moisture out with a cheesecloth or a milk bag, either one, same difference pretty much. Um, so I squeezed the moisture out in there and that just made an extra step and it was a pain in the butt and, and uh, everything. And uh, he showed this version where he just kind of tried to cook off the moisture and stuff and you know maybe maybe you don't get as much moisture out that way but as you can see it held up really well so um you know i'm kind of thankful that i found his video because he kind of tweaked my method of doing things and uh so let's go show him some love because uh i appreciate that i found this simpler way to make this keto pizza so go show him some love all right you guys that's gonna be it for this one. It's cooled off enough here, so I mean, it held off when the it was warm, so there's really nothing to show you here. But uh, yeah, um, go try this, guys. It's really good. It really is. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to devour this. But I'm gonna to have to devour it while I'm editing, editing this video because I got a late start. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna get started, you guys. We will catch you later. 
All right, you guys, so there you have it. There's the uh, cauliflower crust pizza. Um, hope you, I hope you guys enjoy trying it yourself. Uh, it's pretty good stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, I was gonna write up the uh, recipe for you guys and everything, and, but you know what? It's, it's almost identical to the Chef Buck guy, and so let's just show him some love. I'll link his recipe down in the description. Let's go show him, show him some love, because it was, uh, my methods are almost identical to his. He's, he's the one who showed me an easier and simpler way to do it and everything, so uh, let's go show him some love. Check out the recipe of his in the description. And I will uh, put the nutrition facts of uh, the way I made my pizza so that you guys know using the uh, the uh, much lower carb uh, sauce and everything and you know and so if you want to kind of do similar to what I've done then you'll get a rough idea of uh, what the nutrition facts are going to be so I'll, I'll list that down in the description or uh, or give you a link to it or whatever I decide to do and uh, go check out the recipe of how to make the pizza on Chef Buck's website. Anyways, that's all for now guys. I gotta hurry up and edit this video and get it out on time, the time I promised. I, uh, I stayed up too late last night. I, I mean, I couldn't fall asleep, but it wasn't really necessarily my fault, but, uh, and I slept in quite a bit uh, this morning, so I got a late start, and so now I gotta try to hurry up and get this out to you uh, at the time that I promised. So, I'm gonna go do that, and, uh, We'll catch you guys later.